This is CBS. Coming up on Late Edition, disappointment over Boeing's decision. Trouble for the Bank of Oklahoma. Helping Oklahomans land jobs. What Jason Jr. saw today. Those stories and more coming up on Newsline 9 Late Edition. Join us. Next, a bodybuilder is sued for car damage. Did someone hit the plaintiff's car? They destroyed it. On the next People's Court, tonight at 10.30 on TV9. KWTV9, the spirit of Oklahoma. Now, the number one newscast in Oklahoma with Patty Suarez. Roger Cooper, John Snyder Sports, and Oklahoma's number one meteorologist, Gary England. This is Newsline 9 Late Edition. Good evening. The Boeing Aircraft Company has made its decision tonight. If it wins that Defense Department maintenance contract, it will build its new plant in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Newsline 9's Randy Renner has more. It started with 50 cities, all trying to get one of these a Boeing aircraft maintenance plant. More importantly, with the plant and the planes come the jobs, about 1,500 of them in this case. For almost a month now, the final cities have been offering and counter-offering. In the end, there were more dollar signs in theirs than in ours. We've got an outstanding workforce. That was not a problem at all with Boeing. It was simply the financial package, and as he said over the phone, uh, Boeing was offered government money by Louisiana, whereas our package was private. Boeing notified city leaders by phone. The call came three hours later than it had been expected. Though disappointed, city and state officials say finishing second isn't all that bad. That's the most significant thing that can come today other than uh, if we would have gotten the plant, and that is that we competed with uh, all the other states, and we were in the top two. Uh, of the sites. Uh, we were in the finals, and it just didn't go our way. But next time it will. City officials are disappointed now, but you can bet they'll be grinning like Cheshire cats if in September, Boeing does not win the military contract it needs to build the plant. Then folks in Lake Charles will be left up in the air with nothing but high hopes. At the Chamber of Commerce downtown, I'm Randy Renner, Newsline 9, Late Edition. According to City Councilman Jim Scott, what made the difference to Boeing was the bottom line cost of operating the plant here versus Lake Charles. The best the city would do for a, could do for a Will Rogers Airport site, he says, was a deal that would have cost Boeing about $5 million a year. Lake Charles, on the other hand, offered to get Boeing into its Chenault Air Park for only $750,000 a year. the fact that uh, the state of Louisiana uh, had $35 million in industrial revenue, uh, industrial bonds uh, to put into this project had to be a tremendous factor. Those bonds guaranteed with taxpayers' money help cut Boeing's costs in Louisiana. Roger? More banking news tonight, and as usual, it is not good. Trading of stock in the parent company of the Bank of Oklahoma City was suspended this afternoon by NASDAQ. Bank Oklahoma Corporation reported losses for the second quarter of the year, those losses drove the book value of its over-the-counter stock from $16.01 a share to $7.78 a share. Bank Oklahoma owns 11 banks, but it's the Oklahoma City Bank that is causing most of the problems. That's the former Fidelity Bank, which the holding company bought in 1984. A hefty share of a problem loan came with a package. And I think the economy certainly has contributed even more so to that. Marshall says that even though the bank is out of compliance with federal regulations on cash-to-loan ratio, the bank's problems are solvable. He points out the Bank of Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, can rely on support from 10 sister banks in the company. It appears tonight that Chicago prosecutors will seek to reinstate those charges against former Penn Square Bank officer Bill Patterson. A federal judge in Chicago threw out charges yesterday against Patterson, Jerry Sturgis, an Indian oil man, and Continental Illinois Bank Vice President John Lytle. The men were accused of conspiring to sell worthless loans from Penn Square to Continental Illinois. Prosecutors in Chicago say the case was dismissed on a technicality. They will take it to a grand jury for another indictment. Patty? A Northwest Oklahoma City couple is charged tonight with brutalizing their baby daughter. Michael and Deborah Randall were arraigned today for beating two-month-old Tamika Turner. The child's feet have reportedly been punctured 62 times with a pencil. In addition, doctors say Tamika suffers brain damage and fractured legs. A two-month-old can barely even hold its head up. 
when you're talking about shaking a two-month-old child violently enough to cause these kind of injuries, you're talking about some very, very violent sort of shaking. Michael Randall claims the infant does not have brain damage. A judge scheduled the Randall's preliminary hearing for August 4th. An Oklahoma City girl who was the focus of an all-night search turned up unharmed today. 12-year-old Tammy Nichols disappeared yesterday morning while she was mowing grass at a cemetery with her parents. Police say she ran away to avoid an argument with her folks. Still ahead on Late Edition, Gary with the weekend weather. Color pictures from the ocean's floor. Disturbing news about cocaine and babies. Reasons why tobacco ads should be banned. And the spirit of cooperation continues. Stay with us. Oklahoma's lottery petition is being challenged tonight by the editor of the Baptist Messenger newspaper. To get the lottery requested on the November ballot, 100,000 signatures had to be gathered. 150,000 signed the petition. But Richard McCartney thinks a lot of the signatures are invalid. This petition was uh, circulated uh, in large part by people who are paid by the name uh, to get signatures. Uh, there's a great deal of, uh, of temptation there to uh, not ask the important question of are you a registered voter? Uh, is your address the place where you're registered? Uh, you see, the signatures must be of, right. uh, of registered, qualified well, voters. McCartney also challenged the proposed law on the grounds it's unconstitutional. If the state Supreme Court decides the protest is legitimate, volunteers will have to check each of the 150,000 signatures. The Lottery is OK committee says McCartney and what it terms the moral majority are trying to drag this out in court until it's too late to get the question on the November ballot. Patty? About 40% of America's wealth is concentrated in the hands of only 12% of America's families. That's the finding of the Census Bureau's ever, first ever assessment of wealth in America. Some other interesting findings, the typical black family has a net worth of just over $3,000, less than one-tenth the assets of a white family. And by profession, the richest people include self-employed managers and professionals, those in the farming, forestry, and fishing professions, had the smallest net worth. As Oklahoma's economy heads downhill, its unemployment rate is steadily rising. Oklahomans who have never been without a job before are now showing up at state employment offices across the state. Archie Randall says this is the worst he's ever seen it. He's been interviewing for management jobs since being laid off from an oil field supply company in March. The little league coach and father of two says he's getting discouraged. This is the worst that it's ever been for me and my family. I've never been unemployed this long. I've never been able not to find a job. Randall's wife is pregnant and due in August. He says it's a real mental strain being unemployed, but he's not giving up hope. As Archie Randall knows, going to an employment office for the first time can be a humbling experience. All week long, Newsline 9's Randy Renner has been giving the jobless tips on finding jobs. Tonight, he concludes his series by looking back at what we've learned. If you want to find a crowd, any office of the State Employment Service is usually a good place to find one. In the past, lines of people would snake out the doors and down the street. Since last October, though, state offices have cut down on that by bringing all those people into group sessions instead of waiting to see them one at a time. And there was another change in October. Anyone filing for the first time is given an aptitude test. Yes, I took it too and flunked rivets and washers. Well, how you do on these tests, and a written one covering math, vocabulary, and so forth, determines what kind of job you do best at. All the information is fed into the job service computer bank. And all applicants can be matched with all jobs. Basically, it's a difference between being in the right place in the right time and just whoever's handy uh, and an organized system where we have access to all the applicants when we do get a job opening from an employer. When that opening comes, there are applications to fill out and interviews to make it through. The job service provides first-time filers with a seminar to teach the basics. On the application, fill in every blank space. Put in as much information about yourself as you can. In the interview, maintain eye contact, tell the employer how you could help his company, and try to set a time when you can make further contact. The state offers these services free of charge. There are more than 100 privately run employment agencies in Oklahoma City. Many offer the same things on a more personal level. Some agencies help you with interviews, resumes, contacts. When you get a job, a percentage of your salary will go to the agency. 
Other firms will get your name and qualifications in front of an employer for a one-time charge, usually less than $50. Now, these have just been some ideas. If you're looking for a job, we certainly hope they've been of some help to you. And as Oklahoma's unemployment problem continues to grow, we will continue our efforts to find solutions to it here at Newsline 9. You should join reporter Paul Lowe in the coming weeks for a continuing series of Jobline 9 reports. For now, I'm Randy Renner, Newsline 9, Late Edition. And we will stay with Jobline 9, all kinds of uh, listings of people who need work and uh, how to go about getting jobs, as Randy says. Trying to put the two together. We'll stay put you together with weather, right? Right. Stay with me. Not too many people will argue that our nation's weather has been a little bit strange this year. And that is probably what a number of Minneapolis-St. Paul residents were thinking today as they looked at this. A tornado ripped through the area, damaging homes and even injuring a few people. A site that's common during Oklahoma's spring and summer months came as quite a surprise to people more accustomed to blowing snow than flying rooftops. Look at that. Uh, there's people moving right in the foreground there. Oh, ooh. goodness gracious. That's an F-watt. That's, that's, a, that's a significant tornado. It almost looked like it was multiple vortex. Uh, there, there were several of those. They said they uh, saw about 11 yeah. in all yeah. in that area. I do have a report where it touched down at Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, Fridley, Minnesota, and Blaine, Minnesota. At least it touched down at those three towns. I don't have, don't call me, I don't have anything else. That's all I have on it. Weather-wise, uh, we have some hope. Let's take a look at it first, though, for Oklahoma City, 84. Right where we were last night at this time, relative humidity 40%. Barometric pressure 30.09 and rising. Wind south at about 7 no precipitation on radar, but moisture is increasing through Arkansas and Louisiana and northeast Texas, and uh, some of it may make in, at least the moisture is going to move into eastern Oklahoma tomorrow. So discomfort index will go up in that part of the state and be very, very hot and very discomfortable, we might say. And there might be one or two isolated thunderstorms down there. Then on Sunday, slight risk of a few thunderstorms in the state as a cool front moves in. Can you believe that? Let's take a look at it now. Temperature-wise today here in Oklahoma City, at least at... at uh, the airport out of Will Rogers, 99. The record for this date, 108. Normal's 94. So we're going a little bit above normal. We'll be above normal, looks like, a Saturday for sure. Sunday, probably also. Uh, high temperatures this afternoon, uh, just a little on the hot side. We'll go 102 at Ponca City, 101 at Woodward and Enid, 100 at uh, El Reno. Of course, 99 at Will Rogers, 102 in Midwest City, 100 at Hobart. All, a bunch of 99s down through the south. Cool spot, if we can call it that, it was 98, that was Idabel. It was 100 uh, in Tulsa and Coweta, 102. Current temperatures, we've, we've, well, we've cooled off some. Here in Oklahoma, of course, 84. It's 82 in Ponca City, uh, mid and upper 80s, the rest of the state. And we get down in McAllister, 83. Winds are light, and tomorrow they run about 10 to maybe occasionally 20 in some parts of the state, but generally about 10 to 15 the way it looks right now. Okay, let's look out here to our west. And uh, we'll turn on our movie here for about the last uh, six, seven hours, see what happens. And you see the enhancement, the clouds grow, the thunderstorms uh, begin to grow in parts of the Dakotas and Nebraska and over to Minnesota and Wisconsin, wind gusts 60 to 80 miles per hour, large hail. Then we had the storms. Remember last night, if you were watching, we had the storms that were more over into Alabama. They've moved into parts of Arkansas and Texas and are coming up this way just a little bit. Uh, and some of that may move into uh, northeastern or southeastern Oklahoma tomorrow. Not a sure thing, but it is a possibility. Yellow areas indicate the strongest thunderstorms. And they're, I'll tell you, they're hammering the folks in the far north tonight. And by the way, this really is uh, more their tornado season. They're, it kind of migrates. It's here in the spring, and moves on north in the summer, and then drops back down to Florida and comes back around again. Uh, this activity you might take a look at the uh, 18,000 foot level. And there's a little what we call an easterly wave in here. And here's the big high pressure. It's been keeping everything very hot in the east and also in this part of the country. It's building to the west, but along the bottom of it, kind of crawling along there, is a disturbance and it's, it's turning up toward Oklahoma. It would be nice if it would come right on up here and cloud things up a little bit. So we have this one coming this way, and we're going to try to bring this front and cool air down on Sunday. Tomorrow, though, basically it will be a scorcher tomorrow afternoon. Now, early morning hours, you get up around sunrise, it'll be super. But tomorrow afternoon, it will be oppressive, all right? 101 down in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, 100 in Kansas City tomorrow, 90 in, in the Albuquerque area. If you head east, 99, oh, it's just hot. 99, 100, hot, humid, sticky, all through the south and through the east, at least east of us. Five-day forecast, Oklahoma City and vicinity, around 
It'll vary some of the city. Some areas of the city are going to get quite a bit hotter than this, uh, near the concrete and the asphalt, but around 101, and then Sunday, 101. But if the front comes in a little sooner, it may knock that down. Monday, we'll go for some relief. Monday, we'll go 94 and back down to normal there, Tuesday, 95. Forecast for the state for tonight, clear and warm, winds southerly 5 to 10, lows in the 70s. For tomorrow, sunshine and very hot tomorrow afternoon. The wind southwest 10, occasionally might kick to 20. The high is 97 to 104. And for Oklahoma City, warm tonight, sunny and very hot tomorrow afternoon. High around 101. Discomfort index will be higher than that. That basically wraps it up on this Friday night in the big town. We're through. We're through. We're through. Ready for a long weekend. Yeah, sure are. Go Unless care, it storms. Take care of the spiders for a weekend. Well, we're after the red spiders. Uh, still got a few. Work on them this weekend. Good. OK. Well, conserve is the word this weekend if you live in the northwest part of Oklahoma City. A part of the Lake Hefner water treatment plant broke this week. Now the plant can only pump water at 60% capacity. Add to that the scorching temperatures and huge demand for water on the weekends, and city officials say we might have a problem if a big fire were to occur. In the name of safety, city officials are asking those who live north of Northwest Highway and west of Portland to curtail heavy water use until Monday. Up next on Late Edition, the war on drugs is underway. And hearings to get rid of tobacco ads. Stay with us. Next, a muscle man is sued for damaging a car. He was doing the beating on the headlights. He was in the other bodybuilder. The bodybuilder explains why. His car was destroyed because he tried running over little kids, and they didn't want him to do it again. So they destroyed the car. Then what little got, kids did he try to run over? The kids that lived at the hotel. And I could produce 25 witnesses. Well, then the plaintiff answers the charge. You try to run over some children? No, sir. Tonight at 10.30 on TV9. A barrage of anti-smoking testimony today in Washington as congressional hearings got underway. An Oklahoma congressman and several others are trying to ban all tobacco advertising. Today's star witness, the grandson of tobacco magnate R.J. Reynolds. If the hand that once fed me is the tobacco industry, then that same hand has killed millions of people and will continue to kill millions more unless people wake up to the hazards of cigarettes. Reynolds says his father died of a tobacco-related disease. So did Victoria Brenner's father, Yule Brenner. She brought this tape made right before he died. Now that I'm gone, I tell you, don't smoke. All today's testimony was from supporters of the ban on tobacco ads, including the bill's sponsor, Oklahoma Congressman Mike Siner. As the Surgeon General most recently said, this is the single largest health risk in our nation. But more importantly, it is the largest preventable illness that we have. Next month, the tobacco and advertising industries will probably testify that the ban would violate the First Amendment and would not reduce smoking. Roger? That battle in Bolivia against cocaine is now underway. U.S. drug agents took off from a Trinidad base camp just uh, after dawn today. Most of the activity is now taking place at a new base camp set up closer to the cocaine labs. U.S. helicopters and some U.S. troops are assisting Bolivian soldiers in this attempt to destroy a number of cocaine labs. Journalists are barred from the lab area, but sources say already one coke lab has been hit and an airplane full of drug equipment seized. Pregnant women addicted to cocaine often deliver children with severe medical problems. Every time I took a base hit, I thought about these babies inside and what I was doing to them, but I had no control. She freebased cocaine the first four months of her pregnancy and used a gram of the drug before she went into labor. But Jane was lucky. Her twins, one born with a brain hemorrhage and one with a collapsed lung, will survive. Both will be constantly monitored to make sure they don't stop breathing. Other cocaine babies are not so lucky. This one has seizures, water on the brain, and cannot suck. Thanks to advances in technology, most of the babies will live at least until they get home. Doctors say too often mothers have sold their own babies breathing monitors to support their habits. In sports, the nation's best bowlers are right here in town tonight. And Greg Norman pulls away from the pack. John Snyder's next. Sixty-three, sixty-three. You keep talking about this magic number. That's a very good score. As a matter of fact, sixty-three has been shot a few times in the U.S. Open and the Masters and the PGA. Had he shot sixty-two and he just missed the sixty-two today, it'd been the best score ever shot in a major golf tournament. 
And this is uh, no ordinary course. This is no ordinary course. Uh, it's like playing in a wheat field in some respects. Uh, he did a very good job. And both the Masters and the U.S. Open, Australian star Greg Norman was uh, not able to hold a lead late in the tournament. He's one of the game's best, but he has yet to win a major. It might come this weekend at the British Open. Today, Norman had one of the best rounds in golf history, and he's got the lead after two rounds. All he did today in Turnberry, Scotland, was shoot 7 under par 63. That tied the course in the British Open record, which was set originally by former OSU star Mark Hayes. Now, Norman would have had 62, except for a bogey on the final hole. His round leaves him at 3 under par, two shots ahead of British star Gordon Brand. Many believe that along with Seve Ballesteros, Greg Norman is the most talented golfer in the world right now. Bob Toy of Edmund, who has had a great year, is still in the running. Bob had a 71 today. He's eight back, but he's in the top 16 at 145, along with several other Americans. Danny Edwards, 13 back. Scott Verplank missed the cut. He will not play the final two rounds. So Greg Norman is the leader. Three under par. Gordon Brand, two shots back at one under par. Nick Faldo, a couple of others at one over par. Bob Toy, Raymond Floyd, and a couple of others at plus five. Eight shots behind. Danny Edwards, again, is plus 10. He is 13 behind. Dick Hauser. The manager of the Kansas City Royals will undergo surgery for a brain tumor next week. The tumor was discovered during a CAT scan today. Doctors say they will not know if it's cancerous until after the operation. Royals coach Mike Ferrero will manage the team the rest of the season. In the American League tonight, Jack Morris had his third straight shutout as the Texas uh, Rangers lost to the Detroit Tigers 5-0. The Yankees beat Chicago. The final was 8-4. Minnesota's beaten Baltimore 7-3. Cleveland and Kansas City 2-2 in the seventh. In the National League, Chicago beat San Francisco 2-1. And watch the Cincinnati Reds. They beat Philadelphia tonight 6-5. And the Reds are only five games back in the National League West. And truly, Dave Parker was the star of the game. This home run right here, he had four RBIs. And look at the crowd at Riverfront Stadium. Now watch the throw that Parker makes. This is in the ninth inning as Philadelphia tries to tie it. Parker nails Glenn Wilson at the plate, and the Reds win the game. Right there, 6-5 to five again. They're only five games back in the division. Atlanta and Montreal late getting started because of rain. Montreal leads in the second inning. Pittsburgh over uh, San Diego. The final was 12-7. to seven. Los Angeles leading St. Louis. Houston leading the Mets in the eighth. The American Association of the 89ers tied up with Indianapolis in the fifth inning. 49 of the top 50 money winners in professional bowling are here this weekend for the Hammer Open, which... Officially starts on Sunday at the Boulevard Bowl in Edmond, although the pros have been here the last couple of days playing in various pro-ams against amateurs. The bowlers were golfing today. Steve Cook hitting here will not win a lot of money in golf, but he may very well be the bowler of the year. He won 16000 in the Austin Open on Wednesday night, 108000 this year. He is the likely favorite to win in Edmond. Usually, if you're, uh, you know, you win a tournament, uh, you know, they're looking at you as a favorite for next week. But since we haven't bowled in this house before, it's kind of like uh, up in the air. You know, everybody's kind of wondering what the conditions going to be like, how the lanes are going to be, uh, you know, characteristics of the house and stuff. We don't know, so it's going to be a little bit different this week. Uh, I think everybody's got a fair chance to go out and see what you know what happens tomorrow in practice rounds. Another of those on hand is Mark Roth, bowling second all-time leading money winner, over a million dollars. He's bowling well, and like others, he came to Edmond because of local owner Richard Altman. Since I've been bowling well, I might as well continue to bowl. I've known Richard since like 1970-71, and, uh, and I've heard a lot about the bowling center, really good things about it. And uh, lanes have been cut, resurfaced, and uh, they're in good shape. And the whole bowling center is it's beautiful. More pro-ams tomorrow. The tournament starts officially on Sunday. To wrap up the week, Warner Wolf of CBS News, who looks back with the plays of the week. All right, let's go to the videotape, the plays of the week. First of all, the worst judgment by a center fielder on a line drive, the usually reliable Dale Murphy of the Braves. The worst play by a left fielder on a line drive, Randy Bush of the Twins. Most guys falling out of the stands on one foul ball. Fenway Park, get back in, guys. The worst auto race crash with no injury. Big Daddy Don Garlitz, summer national in English Town, New Jersey. The best right-hand combination, Mike Tyson. Right to the body and right to the jaw. Down goes Lorenzo Boyd, fights over. Maria Shriver was at the game, but where was Arnold? Until next Friday, this is Warner Wolf. Arnold and Maria tonight are in uh, Hyannisport Hyannis because uh, Carolyn Kennedy is getting married tomorrow. So that's what they're on. That's right. Sports and all the social engagements. Thank you. More ahead on Newsline 9. Next, an inside look, the marvels of technology. Stay with us. A sleeping monument has awakened tonight as eyes gaze for the first time inside the wreck of the Titanic. 
a miniature U.S. submarine named Alvin landed on the deck of the ocean liner and explored its interior with the robot Jason Jr. Expedition leader Robert Ballard describes what's seen through the eye of the camera. Coming up the side of the ship, you can see these iron sickles that hang down like giant icicles of, of rust. Up through the promenade, looking into the promenade windows and rising up to the deck above. Explorers have found some sections of the ship to be as clean as the day it set sail 74 years ago. The exploration ship and her crew are scheduled to return to shore July 28th. It's creepy, but it's great. It is sca it is spooky, isn't it? It's, yeah. Well, it's it's a grave, and it's a monument at the same time. Who wants it to be left that way? You've got to put a plaque on the side. Yeah. Have a great weekend. Uh, watch out for the heat out there, and we'll see you Monday. Good night. Hairstyles for the Channel 9 News Team furnished by Logsdon Hair Designers. Newsline 9 is the number one rated newscast in Oklahoma.